please be seated. Welcome to Lessons and Carols, and thank you for being with us this afternoon. My name is the Reverend Valerie Bailey Fisher, and I am the chaplain to the college. And this has been an amazing experience working with this team of people to uh, make this wonderful service possible. I want to thank Anna Linty, the director of the, co the concert and chamber choirs, Tim Piper, the organist, and the many students, faculty, and staff, and community members, and of course, the choir members. Thank you very much. Uh, and of course, thank you, the Williamstown community. Uh, and you play an important role. You are the congregation. And there will be opportunities for you to sing. So when, when the, in the program, we invite you to stand as you are able and sing along at the hymns. During the offertory, we will be taking a special collection for the Berkshire Immigrant Center, the Al Nelson Friendship Center Food Pantry, and the Williamstown Food Pantry. We thank you for your food donations, and in many ways, it's going to be spread out through the other uh, uh, food pantries that work collectively to combat foods inst uh, food insecurity. Uh, so we if, thank you for your food donations, and if you're uh, making a cash or check, their checks are made out to the Williams College Chaplain's Office, and please, please put lessons and carols in the memo line. So we have an exciting and wonderful program this evening. The theme is Peace on Earth. And we uh, look forward to uh, this, this evening. We've been looking forward to this all year. So in your programs, there is an, an opening prayer that I invite you to say with me. together. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy this mystery perfectly in heaven, where with you, the incarnate Son, and the Holy Spirit lives and loves in the mystery of the Trinity, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. What you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right. Those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. 
We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month of angel Gabriel was sent to God in a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by these words and pointed what sort of greetings this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for the Lord has found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, he will be great and will be called the son of the Most High, and the Lord, and the Lord God will give, will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will there be no end. Mary said, Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born with the whole, will, the, the child born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, who is has also conceived the son, and this, and this is in the sixth month of her, of her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends the reading. Oh, 
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver a child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the guest room. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Here ends the reading.
Good, good afternoon. A few years ago, an ad for a dystopian post-apocalyptic television show caught my attention. The show referenced the late 20th century as the period of the long peace. Now, this phrase kind of shook me, because if this were true, then our current period may be considered peaceful compared to what's coming. What does this mean? I have always been longing for peace on Earth. What if peace on Earth has already happened? Now, to be honest, I would not call the late 20th century a time of peace. Even as a kid in the late 1960s, the world did not feel peaceful. Peace was something that was hoped for, but I was aware that whatever peace on Earth may have been, it was not happening in my early childhood. As a kid, I was conscious that the country was at war, even if I didn't know the location of Vietnam. The unrest and uncertainty of the Civil Rights Movement era blended into my sense of a country being at war. Even though I was little more than a toddler, I remember the Sunday after Martin Luther King's assassination. The grieving in church was so intense. I stood up on a pew, three years old, and looked to the front of the church and asked my mother, where's the body? Because it felt so, so grief-stricken. It felt like a funeral. And so as we walked home from church in my neighborhood in Philadelphia, I remember standing on the street corner and sensing the mood in the neighborhood. And it was the exact same sense of grief I was experiencing in church. And I remember saying, mommy, the funeral is everywhere. Our current world situation is not one of peace and it's coming close to feeling like the, like the funeral is everywhere. The world watches as humanitarian crises occur by the minute in Israel and Gaza. We are watching as thousands of men, women, and children die in violence and as the world grapples with the decades of systemic oppression in that region and in our own country. And in our, in our own region, right here in the Berkshires, people are suffering from housing shortages, food insecurity, and job uncertainty. And all of these factors might be contributing to the declining life expectancy. Since 2014, the, life, the US life expectancy fell three straight years in a row. Princeton economists Ann Case and Angus Deaton have coined the phrase death of despair to describe the link between the rise in drug and alcohol related deaths and suicide. These deaths may have influ been influenced by the deterioration of job and education prospects for many US citizens who have entered adulthood after 1970. The grief and isolation of the previous pandemic period has seemed to linger and roll into new forms of isolation as people are cautious about how to talk about the global crisis. It seems strange that a year ago, the most controversial topics were vaccinations and masks. Whatever it is, this is not a world at peace. But here we are at the Christmas season. And this is a season during which many faiths celebrate moments for gathering and reflection. And it becomes one where we dare utter the words, peace on earth. For at the heart of the Christmas story is this promise of, and a promise of peace and a hope of peace. Now the Christmas story occurs within the context of great social unrest. The Holy Family are travelers from another land, immigrants whose journeys were initiated by changes in the social political landscape of Roman occupied Judea and Galilee. Perhaps the shepherds are like us, living in uncertain times, trying to work, trying to work the best they can while violence and war are just around the corner. In the Christmas story, it is the context of uncertainty that the chorus of angels appear. 
Now, the angels may have been a terrifying sight for the shepherds as they proclaimed, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. The angels said that there is a sign, there'll be a sign, and this sign will be a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a man manger. But they continue and they say that glory to, the, to, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he favors. After all of that light and sound, they suddenly disappear and there is a peaceful pause. Perhaps in that moment, peace on earth was imaginable. The shepherd's next move was to go to Bethlehem and to see about this sign, this sign of peace, a baby in a manger. Now, Mary, on the other hand, had just given birth and was probably tired when all of a sudden, a group of shepherds appear not quite the same as a chorus of angels, probably a bit of a surprise, but a welcome surprise. For Mary and Joseph have been living this adventure of becoming parents to a promised child, and now they were sharing this moment with shepherds and at the distance, angels. The funeral that was everywhere was now interrupted with the birth of a child, which was the sign of peace on earth. The birth of a child is one of the most beautiful moments anyone can experience as a parent, grandparent, friend, family, doctor, or nurse. This is why the loss of a child is so devastating. But even if the life was brief, each birth is a miracle. The story of the Christ child whose birth was a sign of peace is not unlike our own stories. Every last person in this room has this one thing in common, you were born. That's right. And that means somewhere, sometime, you were somebody's miracle. You were that moment that broke through time and gave hope. You were that sign of peace for someone. And all of you, when you were a new child, you were a miracle, a mystery, and a possibility. And in that moment, especially if it was a time of unrest, the funeral that was everywhere was interrupted with the event of your birth. And an event that was so miraculous that had a chorus of angels showed up in your birthing space, it might not have been a surprise. Now, if you have people in your life who remember your birth, please ask them about that moment. And you'll find yourself living in a peaceful space as they remember, probably without any words, how, what a miracle you were. Now, if you cannot find someone who remembers the moment of your birth, find someone who remembers one of those moments in your lives that was really amazing your high school graduation, the day that you maybe were in scouting, a day of sport, a sports event or something. I encourage you to find someone that remembers that moment in your life because as we are looking for hope and as we are looking for peace, perhaps we can start with our own stories. Now until, uh, until we find peace on earth, this may be the best we will be able to do. It's finding that peace in our lives, and especially with the people that we love. The global issues are out of control, but not out of our concern. For collective despair when we lose the hope of peace on earth, that's a dangerous thing. It is a dangerous thing to lose hope. Just as the princes and economists were saying, Collective despair leads to collective loss and po quite possibly death. Perhaps we can take a moment and remind each other of how, the miracle that we are, not only 
to ourselves, but to each other. So in this year of uncertainty, pain and suffering, may the Christmas story be a reminder of how for one moment, the funerals turned into birth celebrations, that the heaviness of social and political uncertainty can turn into fantastical mystery and the birth of a child can be a sign that these moments of peace are possible. May your season of Christmas be full of light and hope and peace. Amen.
Hello, my name is Melissa Canavan and I'm the Executive Director of the Berkshire Immigrant Center. Before I continue, I just want to share a short story from a longtime volunteer of ours. I lived happily for years with my green card until one day, on my way home from visiting my son in Washington, D.C., I decided to become an American citizen so I could vote. I filled out the papers, took my test and passed, waited a few weeks and drove to the naturalization center for what I would thought would be a formality. The room was not very big, but it was filled with anticipation. After the swearing-in ceremony, we formed a line as our names were called. I was behind a man who I assumed to be Vietnamese. When the judge handed him his naturalization certificate, he kneeled to the floor, sobbing and laughing at the same time. Before I could decide what to do, he was promptly surrounded by the members of his mentoring family, hugging him, shaking his hand, and laughing with him as they led him out of the room to celebrate. In that instance, the word immigrant took on a different meaning. I could imagine the hardships he had to endure and the hoops he had to jump through to reach this emotional release. For many, the work we do is life-changing. The Berkshire Immigrant Center is the only local nonprofit accredited agency providing comprehensive, low-cost immigration legal services in Berkshire County. In addition to providing immigration legal services, BIC also provides citizenship and ESOL language classes for free, presentations and workshops, translation services, and referrals. We know there are new families and individuals coming to our region, so any way you can support is greatly appreciated. It will allow us to continue to grow our team, services, and support the immigrant community. Thank you so much. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is shepherd, is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that, had, that they had seen in the east, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now, after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night 
and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. Here ends the reading.
As we enter this new liturgical year, fill our hearts with hope and love for our neighbor. In this busy time, help us stay grounded, remain at peace, and focused on Jesus. Dear God, please hear these following petitions we present before you. We pray for peace in the world during this tumultuous time, for peace in Israel and Palestine, peace in Russia and Ukraine, and peace in all places suffering with violence. We pray for peace here at home, that God can help us find the good in each other and help give us the strength to lift others up to find the peace that is in all of us. We pray for people without the support structures they need, for those who face the challenges of mental health, addiction, depression, and loneliness. Wrap your loving arms around them, O Lord. May they get the help they need and realize the support system around them filled with love and understanding. Bring them comfort in your name. We pray for our own communities. We are thankful for a strong and loving community, for all of our loved ones, those on Williams College campus, our friends, and our families at home. Lord, we also remember those who have departed from this earthly life. May they find eternal rest and peace in your presence. Console the hearts of those who mourn and grant them the strength to find solace in the hope of resurrection. We unite our intentions, seeking your grace to transform our communities into reflections of your divine love. Finally, we pray for all the prayers we have individ individually in our hearts. As we step into Christmas, we place our trust in you, our rock and God. Lord, in this ever-changing world, keep, help us keep our eyes fixed on you, finding our hope and strength in your eternal love. In the season of giving, we pray for a true spirit of charity. May we be inspired by the selfless love exemplified by Jesus Christ. Teach us to be compassionate, generous, and understanding, reaching out to those in need with open hearts and hands. May the spirit of charity permeate every interaction, fostering a sense of belonging and support for all. For our world, we ask for peace. Bring healing where there's hurt, unity where there's division, and hope where there's despair. Inspire us to make decisions with love, justice, and truth, reflecting your heart for all people. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer and, and feel free to say it in whatever language is closest to your heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. Mine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. 
But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Here ends the reading.
Thank you for being with us this afternoon. I want to extend a special thanks to the bell ringers who you heard before the service began playing Christmas carols on the bells in the tower. And I would also like to thank the handbell choir whose music will be, um, you'll enjoy as you're leaving. And if you enjoy this music, and once again, I would like to thank the choir and uh, the concert and chamber choirs. Many of them also uh, sing during even song services, which happen uh, twice a semester. The next one will be March 7th, and the last one for the spring semester will be May 9th. They're at 5 p.m. here in Thompson Memorial Chapel. If you're uh, available, please join us. So as we get prepared to leave this space, um, I would like to also let you know that there is an exit over here to my right for those who need to leave quickly and, and as opposed to staying and listening to the handbells, you can leave from over here. But it is customary that people do as they're leaving and uh, enjoy the handbell choir and invite you to do that as well. I also want to remind you uh, uh, or to also thank you for your food donations and any donations to the Berkshire Immigrant Center and the food banks are received in the foyer, in a basket, or in the box. Thank you, Melissa, for in, uh, uh, being here to share more about uh, the work of the Berkshire Immigrant Center. And thank you all for coming. And at this time, I'm going to offer a closing prayer, which will be followed by the hymn, Joy to the World. Let us pray. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven and earth and earth to heaven, give you God's peace and favor during the season of unrest and uncertainty. Renew our hope and peace, and may we see in each other the miracle that we are. Amen.
know we're just having the audience go.
we're ready to go there. Okay, let's go.